Welcome to another glorious day here in Africa. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this AfriCam show brought to you by explore.org. Of course, it's me Trishala again. Yes, you stuck with me for a few weeks. And oh, what a beautiful way to start off our show. We have a beautiful old Ellie Bull taking advantage of the nice water and of course some impalas. So I'm sure that you have lots of questions, lots of comments, lots of highs. So please send them through because remember this is live and interactive. I so miss the bush when I see scenes like this, especially seeing a lovely Ellie bull like that. It's almost as if he could hear me. Did you see how he paused there? Now I'll tell you in a moment how I know he's old. But first, let's do our hellos. Hi, Cindy Shelton. You say good morning from Texas in the USA. Well, good morning to you too, but it's a good afternoon here in South Africa. It's four o'clock. That's the time we start our show. And Kelly in Washington, you say hi, Trishala. Hi, Kelly. It's lovely to meet you over the scenes of the African bush, isn't it? Oh. So this elephant bull, let me tell you first why I know that he's quite old. Earlier we had a closer look at him, which is how I knew it was a him. Very close look. But if you look at his forehead, you can see it's quite rounded. So that's an easy way to tell that it's a male, um, although he's showing you why he's a male at the moment. Looking very strong. But their foreheads tend to get rounder as they get older. So it's more difficult to wait to the part when they're young. But now we have a good look as well as another indication of his age. You can see that hourglass shape is where his eyes and his tusks are. In between, it kind of curls in like an hourglass. And that, that size gets larger and larger. So that hourglass effect gets greater and greater the older they get. And then also, oh, scratching the back of the ear. Oh, that's lovely. Also, just above the eyes, you can see that there's two kind of dimples where they have um, sweat glands, well, modified sweat glands, and those get deeper the older they are as well. Oh, this is too lovely. So what is he doing? I'm sure that all of you know because you're so well seasoned and spending time, albeit virtually, in the bush is he spraying water and mud on himself muddy water is probably the more correct term and that's going to help him cool down make his skin feel nice especially if there's any injuries like a cut or maybe the skin is a little dry that helps quite a bit i also want to want to point out how um kind of amicably everyone is associating here we've got the impalas that are just chilling having a bit of a snack and our old bull just enjoying himself too now if this was a young elephant this might not be uh, as relaxed a scene as it is right now because they can be quite curious but i always find that older bulls whenever i've had great sightings with elephants really great ones it's always been with older bulls very gentle of course that can change at any moment especially if you don't know how to behave in their presence but they they have a really good feeling about them they make you feel like you are actually interacting with another being just lovely Oh, we still have some more hellos. Good morning from Minnesota, says Chung. Thanks, Chung. And Tammy one says, hello, everyone. Hello, Tammy. And then we have Chung Lee. You say, where is this in Africa? So this is in Tembe. So this is South Africa, if that's what you were wondering. <laughs> Hi, Mindy, Mindy. 560, you say, oh my word, it's Tushala. It's so good to see and hear you again. It's so good to, to be in your in your ear again, Mindy. Oh, this Ellie is really giving us uh, 
the best entertainment. Now he's digging. So when you really think about animal behavior in the bush, a lot of the time it's quite logical, as long as you have, I guess, the sufficient context. But we know that he is enjoying the mud, and the best way to get more muddy water is to stir it up. And that's what he's been doing with his legs. Then the other thing you might see them doing is dig a hole, but not in that kind of fashion. Dig a hole so that especially in drainage lines, so the water fills up and that's nice fresh water that they can drink. The water he's getting now, I can't imagine that that's uh, too clean, but they tend not to mind too much, especially when they're having fun. When they're serious about drinking, they can be very picky about the water that they, uh, that they get. If you can imagine in that trunk of his, so this is a fully grown well, he is a pretty old bull, so he has little more growing to do, if at all. And that trunk has about maybe 40,000 true muscles, 40 or 50,000 true muscles, and is sucking up a fair amount of water. About 12 liters of water at capacity and then dunking that into its mouth. Just in case you didn't know, because I know lots of people assume, especially when they look at elephants drinking, assume that they're sucking up water and drinking through it, but obviously that's an extension of their nose, their trunk, so they can't drink through it, but they use it as a straw. So they suck water up and then dunk it into, into their, their mouths. And that's hydrostatically controlled. You've probably heard that before. But what that means is that the volume of water, so water is exerting pressure on the muscles for it to move in a certain way. So that's what hydrostatic means. It just means um, using water pressure to move something. Hi, Rolling Trouble. You want to know how hot is it there in Tembe? It's about 25 degrees Celsius, so 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, I am not there. I am here in Cape Town where it's substantially colder. Oh, look at that. Scratching the back leg. And you would have also seen him just kind of roll his trunk over onto one tusk. The trunk can get quite heavy. It could be 100, 150 kgs. Imagine your nose weighing that much. Well, I mean, for me, I just fall flat on my face and never be able to get up because <laughs> that's like double my weight. But they'll rest it on the tusk sometimes, which is what you just saw. Lisa White, absolutely, you say that Ellie is enjoying himself. He really is. Isn't it just the most wonderful thing to see animals enjoying themselves? Oh, do we sense trouble here? No, and Paula's still got its head down. Oh, isn't this amazing? It's coming so close. <laughs> no, it will, it will. <laughs> Oh, I thought you said, will it ever stop, as in the entertainment part of this elephant. And I was going to say, it will never stop. Oh, look at that. A little bit of a display to those birds. But uh, Pat, you actually wanted to know if elephants ever stop growing. So actually, technically, they don't. It just slows down quite a lot. And because growth is affected by condition, and as an elephant grows older, the condition, the condition worsens, um, so the growth rate is reduced a lot. But technically, they don't stop growing. Pamela, you'd like to know if this is a sanctuary? No, this is part of a reserve. So uh, where a sanctuary is somewhere that animals are taken care of, um, 
like animals that are orphaned or injured. A reserve is just an area that is is managed in terms of conservation of the area. So animals can only exist in their landscape, right? So it's a protected area and then the animals live in that area. So they're not tended to by humans or anything like that. This is just a protected area where elephants naturally roam. This bull is really having the time of his life. Imagine being an elephant bull that loves water and then you have all these little water sources to move to and from. That's pretty much an Ellie party, I think. But let's move on from him now. You know, I could spend all day with an Ellie, especially a beautiful bull like this, but let's move on to another amazing creature, much smaller, much scalier. It's a Nile monitor. Now, I just had the best idea while I was, saw this monitor earlier. So this is at um, Shilati, and this monitor is just basking. Well, at the moment, the sun doesn't look very, very um, strong, shining down on the monitor lizard, but you can see that it's on a rock. So that means that the rock is nice and warm. So I thought, because I'm always cold, constantly cold, um, <laughs> and if I had a heated rock at home, I would love it. I would be this monitor lizard. This would be my spirit animal for when I'm cold. So being a reptile, obviously, uh, it has trouble regulating its body temperature and it will be able to do that only from the ambient temperature. So if it's in a cold spot, its body temperature is going to be cold. If it's in a warm spot, its body temperature is going to be warm. And um, that works both ways. We always think of reptiles as really disliking the cold, and that's true, but they also can overheat. And that can be tricky, obviously. Being a reptile is not, not easy because you've got to make sure that you're in that sweet spot. Luckily, their sweet spot has a lot more range than our sweet spot. Hi, Zygote. You say hi, Trishala. Hi. It's nice to have you on board again. So monitor lizards, well, a Nile monitor lizard or a water monitor lizard, is the longest lizard in Africa. It can get to about two meters. Some specimens even quite much bigger than that. And you can, so the other monitor we have is the rock monitor or the bush felt monitor. And it looks quite different. It doesn't have this kind of coloration, but obviously the shape is quite the same, um, apart from the snout, which is a little more cube-like, shall I say, in the rock monitor. And also the rock monitor has a flatter tail. So if we look at the water monitor's tail, you can see that it, it kind of looks like a rudder. And that's because it helps it to move through the water. And if you're lucky enough to see them swim, which is quite a joy, then you'll see that they move their tail in the way that I'm moving my arm now that you obviously can't see but it just happens naturally. What can I do? It helps them to swim um, and propel themselves. And they're quite feisty creatures, definitely not something you'd want to get into a fight with. Not that you should get into a fight with any animal, just saying. Uh, you definitely, with a water monitor, they have long claws. You can't really see them, but you can imagine them. Long claws for digging and also for scratching. So, yep, yeah, don't want to get on the bad side of a, of a water monitor. Now, apart from this, they've got uh, quite a voracious appetite. So they can go after pretty much anything, but they do enjoy eggs quite a lot. And yeah, they're quite feisty. They'll whoop their tail back and forth if, if they're threatened. I've seen a leopard, you know, a young leopard, very curious about the water monitor, uh, try and approach it and the water monitor will just whip its tail back and forth until it reaches 
and some sort of safety. So this monitor has been like this for at least the last 20 minutes, I think. That rock must be really, really warm. That's all I can say. But we have a lovely question about our Ellie Bull that we saw earlier from Andy. So let's see if we can go back there to Tembe and see if the if the bull is still around. Oh yes, you are still around. Really having the time of its life. Can we just spend the whole show with this bull? <laughs> no, we'll move. We will look at the other camps too, but this is just this is beautiful. So Andy, so Andy wanted to know, speaking of aging bull elephants, is there any age where male elephants will no longer care to mate? That's an interesting question, Andy, because um, there are very, let's start with the fact that procreation is the biological point of life. And most animals, there are very few exceptions, um, will mate for as, as long as they're alive. We'll talk about those exceptions in a bit. But they'll mate for as long as they're alive because that makes biological sense. But your question is interesting because you say where they no longer care to mate, which suggests that perhaps they don't have the energy or the stamina or um, perhaps you know mentally it's no longer interesting for them. And that's fairly subjective, so it's difficult to answer that. But it would not make sense biologically for that to happen. A case when that could happen is if the the Ellie is sick or injured, in which case survival would uh, trump finding mating opportunities. Because, I mean, unless, you know, a cow in estrus happens to just stroll past an injured elephant or, an, or a sick elephant, he would have to go seek out those females. Off he went into the bush there. So Andy, just to wrap up there, um, no, essentially. And I say no because it would be, it would be subjective to answer in any other way. It was too subjective. Um, to see to say whether they'd lose interest in mating, but biologically, no, they would not. Now we're back with our monitor lizard in the exact same position. It is alive, though, everybody. I'm seeing micro micro movements, and I've seen I've seen it blink. Zyko just. Uh, um, Back on the point of an early bull, you say that Tembe always has big tuskers. Yeah, that was that was quite a big elephant that we were looking at, and it had really nice thick tusks. But just as a reminder, a tusker, um, zygote has tusks that are oh, thank you, tusks that are in excess of one point five meters. So without giving you too much information about myself, that is just under my height. Imagine that. <laughs> so clearly our, our monitor lizard um, was not cutting it and this edible is more entertaining. Of course it is. But what would be the ultimate prizes of the edible and the water monitor were in one scene? So we were talking about um, why animals don't lose interest in mating. And I said that's because it's biologically important to continue to procreate. So the exceptions to that, which I said I would mention to you, are animals like um, pilot whales, orcas, you and I. And that's because there are very, very, very few animals that undergo any kind of sexual dip or menopause in women. So the only reason it makes sense for us is theoretical at the moment. It's called the grandmother hypothesis. And that's because apparently 
it is uh, good for our survival if we have several generations looking after um, children or youngsters. Perfect timing. We have a question from John. Hi, John. You want to know if monitor lizards can change the shade of their skin? No, they can't. So their, their skin does change over time. When they're very young, they're very bright. So the black and yellow coloring that you're seeing there is very, very bright when they're young. But as they grow older, it gets a little more dull. But they cannot change. Oh, what do we see? Oh, so hoping that maybe like, you know, a leopard comes along. <laughs> One can always hope. Zygote, you say you've seen a martial eagle catching a water, a water monitor lizard? Um, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, a martial eagle is a huge eagle, so it makes sense that they'd be able to lift a water monitor. But I always think, what could you possibly be feeling as a water monitor suddenly being taken to the sky? Because a martial eagle won't eat it straight away. It would catch it and then fly with it for a little bit before it lands and starts to eat the water monitor. And that must be very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. See, now you have that image in your head of what could be going through the head of a water monitor that's flying. <laughs> Andy, you say thank you. My pleasure, Andy. Whenever I do these um, these shows with you guys, it always surprises me how much I enjoy talking about these animals. Because in my head, of course, I love them. Um, and there's all this information that's stored up in there, but don't always get to use it. And that's why it's so wonderful to be able to interact with all of you and be able to answer your questions. So we are here at the Oliphants River now, doing a bird of a pan. Oh, I just thought I saw, um, <laughs> saw a water monitor possibly swimming. Perhaps I did. Just look to the right of your screen. Bottom right. No, I didn't. Never mind, never mind. Just hopeful guides eyes. Lisa White, you'd like to know if I saw the croc on Oliphant's River yesterday with the legs in his mouth as he was floating down the river. <laughs> no, I have not, but I'm gonna ask Kirsten to send that to me so I can see that because I'm not sure if it's what I'm imagining in my head. Because Lisa, what I'm imagining in my head is like, you know, a way a baby on its back has puts its, its feet into its mouth. That's what I'm imagining and floating down the river on its back. And if that is the case, you know, I can retire after I've seen something like that. But I'll ask Kirsten to send me, ooh, little washed up. Ask Kirsten to send me that clip so I can have a look. I love the sounds as well. Maybe we'll just take a moment to have a few deep breaths. Enjoy the scenery and the sound. What a luxury it is to be able to have these kind of wild spaces in South Africa. Ooh, 
right? Places like this and camps all over where you can really experience the bush. And be kind of a fly on the wall. Whenever we do these scans, I'm always looking in anticipation of something coming along. Look at these beautiful fig trees. Hey Pat, Pat, you say there was actually an impala killed here by wild dogs yesterday. I did hear about that. So it'll be interesting to see whether any other scavengers around are around, like maybe vultures or some hyenas. But um, given what I know about wild dogs and and the way that they feed, I would say there's very few scraps left. OMG23 says the same. There were wild dogs here yesterday. Well, keep an eye out, everyone. Lisa, thank you for your lovely compliment. Lisa is just showing, showing some appreciation for me. I'm very thankful for that. Thanks, Lisa. I don't see any predator action and or scavenger action. But you know the smell of a kill can linger for some time, so if you continue to watch the cams for the rest of the day, you might see, especially once dusk sets in, you might see some some scavengers, particularly hyenas, coming around. Beautiful. Now I'd like to. Ooh. Nope. Nothing. I'd I'd like to go back to I think the monitor lizard for the last few minutes we have together. Our elephant bull, you know, did his best, played his part, and has moved moved off. So we're going to spend our last few minutes with this monitor lizard. Things are definitely getting its attention. A lot more movement than when we started off, right? Ooh. Tongues out, smelling the air. Now what would, again, talking about logic, right, in the bush, I mean, with enough context. No, don't go. A forked tongue, if you think about it, means that you, it's like having two hands, right? So if you're blindly walking with your eyes closed, off it goes. Um, but you're both your hands extended. And you want to figure out whether something is on the left or the right of you. Then if both your hands are extended, you'll be able to tell very quickly if something's on your left hand or your right hand side as you're walking through, say, a mall or something. So a similar thing is happening with a forked tongue. It gives a monitor lizard or any other reptile with a forked tongue for that matter, a sense of direction very quickly. And that's really important when you're using that um, to find your prey, especially since they have very well 
developed olfactory senses, which is just sense of smell. It's the Naledi Cam now. And I think that we had a really wonderful time together. And I want to say thank you all for sending in your questions and your comments and interacting with me during this time that we get to spend in the bush. It's always a pleasure. But it is time to say goodbye. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. So I certainly did. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now, everyone. Uh-huh.